So we will not be describing the, the individual APIs and the individual configurations. Again, the, the, the documentation is available online or you can ask at our, at our website uh, for any kind of, of help. And we will have we will have a space for we'll have space in the end for the QA. And regarding the cold chain monitoring, uh, <clears throat> the biggest danger is that it sounds trivial. You know, everyone is has a, has, has a thermometer at his home and thinks that he understands uh, measuring of temperature, and it seems to be trivial. You know, you just measure it and you send the temperature, and that's all. Uh, measuring temperature in the industry, it's not that trivial, and both the force operators and integrators need to understand properly uh, uh, some of the facts that are behind. So, uh, one of the reasons for which Sigfox is far more suitable uh, than anything else for the temperature metering is that the current the traditional temperature data loggers are really stupid. They record temperature at predefined intervals, and then you retrieve the information via either Bluetooth or some kind of uh, proprietary interface from the device. But you don't get the information in real time. You don't get alerts real time. Uh, it, it requires a lot of uh, human intervention. So that's how the traditional data loggers uh, work. We think that with Sigfox, <coughs> Uh, you need to have a different approach uh, because the same way as our body works in such a way that your finger is not uh, reporting the temperature on the finger to your brain all the time, but it uh, reports uh, the temperature only when the finger is freezing or when it's too hot. The same way our devices, Sigfox devices, needs to be smart and really to report to transfer the information only when the information is relevant for the for the for the use case. Uh, uh, the other thing that why well, it's not trivial because it brings a lot of questions. The traditional why, what you want to measure, where, how you want to measure, how much do you want to measure, when, for how long, those are Besides the, the, the question that needs to be asked for any of the Sigfox use cases, but especially for the core chain monitoring. Uh, again, uh, we get requests uh, quite often that they want, that the customer wants to measure. They don't tell us what they want to measure, it's whether it's liquid, whether it's, uh, whether it's air, whether it's surface temperature. It can be quite, uh, quite different approaches for different substances being measured. Uh, they don't tell us accuracy resolution, they don't tell us reaction time, they don't tell us IP rating, uh, measurements intervals, they don't tell us how do you want to trigger the reporting events. Uh, those are the things that need to be discussed with the customer uh, in order to understand the use case and to find the best solution. The same way with the redundancy pipeline, with logging, uh, whether any more sensors needs to be included, accelerometer or read sensor or uh, Wi-Fi tracking, what kind of certification or calibrations the customer requires, and also, not least, uh, the mounting and mounting of the device, the logistics about the devices, and uh, what is the expected battery life. We'll, we'll be dedicating uh, for most of those things uh, each slide, each each slide, and I will try to describe what are the questions that need to be asked uh, uh, from the customer in order to comprehend the use case, the business case, and to find the best solution for the customer. Uh, again, the main question, as in all, Business cases, you know, IoT is not about devices. IoT is not about network. IoT is about processes. It's about the cost of ownership. It's about digitalization of the company of the processes. So any of the business cases needs even in the temper. In the, even it seems to be obvious. So it's not, and you need to define properly what what are the objectives, uh, why you want to do, to do the core chain monitoring. Again, seems to be obvious, it's not. So please, especially if you, as you'll be calculating the total cost of ownership and return on investment, you need to take into account all the factors, not uh, that, not only one. 
Uh, data, I will start with the not obvious, again, it's not, it's not automatic, uh, but again, even with the cochain monitoring, do not start with the devices, start with the data. So please describe what are the current processes, what are the future processes, uh, how it will be the data workflow, uh, what analytics, what visualization will be needed. Uh, whether any dashboards will be needed or whether the processes need to be connected to your uh, quality control or to your ERP systems. Uh, please start with the data, do not start with the hardware, do not start with the devices because uh, otherwise uh, you will end up uh, with gadgetry and not with real consulting and real uh, field application, field deployment. Uh, one more uh, procedural side, and that's about device management. Please don't forget, especially uh, because when you do a POC and you have five devices, so you don't care that much about the devices management. Uh, but uh, for any kind of field deployment where we are talking thousands or ten thousands of devices, device management is, is crucial, and it's also crucial uh, to to define properly in the discovery phase because otherwise you are again not able to calculate the total cost of ownership and you are not able to calculate the return on investment so please uh, do not forget uh, to talk the device management early with the customer do not leave it up to the agreement signing or to, to some other future future phases uh, start discussion about uh, the device management before even deciding or choosing choosing the hardware Again, hardware should be the the last thing in the whole in the whole uh, setup. So we are now we are from data and from from processes. We are back to the hardware. Uh, again, uh, please define what you want to measure with the customer, whether it's air temperature and what kind of airflow is, is is being expected at the place because the airflow airflow influences the reaction time of the device sometimes you can measure surface temperature some kind sometimes you want to measure the liquid temperature so please define in the project specification uh, what will be measured and also where it will be measured whether you know it doesn't it's not sufficient if you say it will be in the freezer but it needs to be one should be clear whether it will be on the top part of the freezer, on the bottom part of the freezer, how it will be mounted. So please describe it in as much detail as possible, uh, ideally with photos as well. So having photos is always for any kind of discovery. It's very, it's very important to have photos of the actual places, not to have abstract freezers, but to have real freezers to, to understand the business case. I'm not sure whether I didn't uh, skip one slide. No, no, no. Uh, what is important to understand is the concept of accuracy and resolution. Uh, accuracy is the degree of conformity to a predefined standard. So precision. So when the device reports that the temperature is one degree, and the real temperature is zero degree, so the accuracy is plus minus one degree. That's the that, that's the accuracy. It's it's different from resolution. Basically, resolutions. If you if you take the traditional thermometer that you measures body temperature, the res resolution are the small uh, parts, the small uh, the small ticks uh, that tell you what is the uh, what is the smallest value that you can read for the from the from the uh, thermometer? Uh, the resolution uh, is dependent on the analog digital converter, uh, but it's also dependent on the use encoding. So, for instance, in our case, we have uh, accuracy of half a degree, and we have a resolution of half a degree. But if we would decide we are using resolution of half a degree in uh, simple pack and simple industry uh, because we are using one by encoding for the temperature uh, in case that the resolution uh, would need to be higher we can 
we can do high resolution uh, for the specific cases, but then the encoding of the temperature uh, we would need to use two bytes for the encoding of the of the of the temperature, which is doable. It's just a hardware fix. Uh, what is important to understand is that the sensors have different uh, uh, accuracies at different uh, temperature ranges. So it's not uh, that they are uh, accurate uh, the same way from minus 55 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. The accuracy differs. Uh, mostly the accuracy is most precise uh, around 25 degrees Celsius, but it can be shifted. It depends on your use case. Uh, the sub-zero temperatures tend to have accuracy of around one degree Celsius. So the, the, the lower you go, in general, generally speaking, the precision uh, will be will be lower. Uh, then there is also a notion, and it's not in the present presentation, is the notion of the drift. Some of the temperature meters, especially at high temperatures, uh, they can have a time uh, time time based change. Uh, um, drift, which means they are getting less and less accurate time and they need to be recalibrated after one or two years. But it applies mostly for the for high temperature and uh, the drift is around uh, 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. It depends on the sensor, but it's not more than that. So if you are, if you do, if for, for some of the application when you do uh, yearly calibration, it's not an issue. Uh, if you do a business case, please always uh, put uh, the best uh, opera the, the best uh, the best range where the device will be operating to understand what is the accuracy in this in this in this range. Response time. Uh, this is also quite important. Response time is basically how fast the thermometer react. Uh, and it uh, and based upon that, uh, one needs to decide whether one can use internal thermometer or whether one can one need to use an external thermometer on the case. Uh, it's given as a time mostly at at how fast the temperature ch change. Uh, uh, Let's say that you have the temperature bit change from zero degrees to 10, 10 degrees. So how far the, temp the thermometer will report a temperature of nine degrees. Uh, this is how, how, fast, how fast you'll get this information. Uh, if you are getting an internal, if you are getting an internal thermal temperature meter, of course, uh, there will be a delay because the temperature needs to be transferred from the air through the plastics, through the internal air to the, to the, to the sensor. And it can take from five to to twenty minutes uh, when it's in the air. If you really really need a thermometer that would react immediately to some events, for instance for fire detection, so one needs to use an external thermometer uh, that has that, that has a reaction time within seconds. Uh, again, the res the response time depends on your local regulation and on the different use cases. But even for HACCP uh, foot regulation, it's around it's 20 minutes. So again, don't shoot for the highest response time if you really don't need the highest response time, because mostly the internal tem temperature meters are cheaper uh, than the external ones. So if, if, if you are fine with a few minutes, a few minutes response time, uh, you can use the internal. If not, you, you need to use the external one. Uh, IP rating. Mm. Uh, again, uh, you, you should define what kind of environment the sensors will be used at, whether it's indoor, whether it's outdoor shielded from rain, outdoor not shielded from rain, or in very humid uh, environment with condensation. We have different devices for different uh, environments. When I when I all get from the simple pack, uh, the smallest one that's IP68 rated, uh, but going only from minus 40 to 60 degrees because it's ABS plastics. If I go to a simple meter, which is an indoor uh, temperature meter, 
So this needs to be shielded from direct rain because it contains holes for air circulation. And if you need to put it into environments where that a condensation could happen, so freezers, etc., you can use simple industrial with IP68 rated and wide temperature range. And for very hot environments, you would use simple industrial hot uh, that can go up to 125 degrees Celsius. Uh, for the really hot engine room environments. Uh, the other thing that uh, that's uh, important to understand is the measurement interval and the distinction between a measurement of temperature and reporting it. Uh, Measurement, it's basically when you trigger out, when, when you trigger, you don't measure the the temperature all the time because it would consume a lot of energy and it doesn't make sense to measure temperature continuously. So you do sampling, you, you tell the device at which time intervals the temperature should be measured. This can be set either in production or through API 6 or downlink uh, to anything between one second and 128 days. So you, you say how often the temperature would be should be should be measured. The default in sample packs is currently three minutes. And um, so uh, that's uh, important to understand that this is the measurement. Uh, then uh, in the, there's a big difference between the dumb device that basically measures, the, the measures and sends information immediately. So you get in the dumb device, you get information about any change of temperature in 15 minutes or after 15 minutes. When you set up uh, simple hardware devices to measure, for instance, each 10 seconds, you will get the information about the change uh, immediately. You will get it. You will get it in 10, 10 seconds uh, after the temperature has 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 has, uh, has happened, and you don't need to wait. Uh, 15 minutes till the till the traditional dump device measurement interval uh, uh, ends, and there's a so there's a there's a temperature measurement, and then you have the temperature reporting. So basically, the smartness, the intelligence, when the temperature should be should be reported. The the, the most stupid and the dumbest one is of course to report it at regular time intervals, the same way as the loggers are doing it. And again, you can set it. You can set the reporting to anything between one second and two hundred twenty-eight days, or one hundred twenty-eight days. And you can have even internal three different timers. So you can say, I want to measure temperature and report it each five minutes or I want to report it each day or each 10 days. It, 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 you set it up completely yourself. But again, this is not the recommended way because you are getting most of the time the temperature is stable and you also are not getting any information on the immediate temperature change. So this is the least recommended way. Uh, the most... Uh, but we have inside we have two 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 other modes. One is uh, uh, temperature change mode. Basically, it makes sense to report temperature only when there is any kind of temperature change, uh, a delta a delta in temperature, a step. Uh, so what we are doing is that we are you can measure the temperature each minute, and if the temperature is the same or within a, a bandwidth. You set up the, the, the bandwidth that you want to keep, and if the, for instance, the temperature is plus minus one degree from the measured temperature, you don't report anything. If the temperature changes by more than one degree, you'll get a message with the real temperature and with, with, with the change of the temperature. In this way, you can save a lot of battery life, a lot of messages, because for most of the time, you are more interested in the changes of the temperature than, than in the temperature being stable. That's one mode. Uh, the other one is the mode where we are using thresholds or boundaries. So, for instance, if you want your cheese to be stored in the temperature between 2 and 6 degrees Celsius, and you want to be alerted only when the temperature is outside of this range, outside, outside of this boundary, you set up against through API 6, you set up uh, very easily uh, the boundaries. 
and uh, once the temperature reaches 6.5 degrees you'll get an alert or once the temperature is below 2 degrees you get an alert with the precise temperature and you are you know that you must uh, uh, make some kind of intervention this is even less uh, less battery consuming uh, than the delta mode or the, the temperature change mode because you don't care if whether the temperature changes between two and six or nine degrees or whatever you need for the cheese uh, at the same time uh, other events can be uh, one can do in the firmware one can uh, trigger the temperature reporting by other events light ingression read switch button change of orientation geo zoning so if you have a use case where you need to trigger trigger reporting of the temperature by some external events this can be done as well uh, Sigfox has uh, as any as basically as any as any network uh, it's not 100% reliable, so it's not the coverage is not 100% everywhere. Uh, but it's not something even GSM is not 100% reliable. So you want to for the places where there is a little coverage or no coverage. For instance, when you are following some kind of route with your with, with the track, you want to be ensure that the temperature uh, uh, being measured is reported to you uh, even when there's no Sigfox coverage and when you are losing messages. Uh, therefore, we have introduced uh, in the API 6, we have the redundancy pipeline. Uh, so we are sending five last measurements together with timestamps. So even if you lose four messages, uh, four last messages, you will still get the full information what was happening what was happening with the uh, with the temperature what was happening with the devices and you are able to reconstruct uh, you are able to reconstruct the whole redundancy pipeline uh, then in the for some of the use cases where you really need to have by regulation where you need really need to hardware lock uh, all the measurements into the into the device in order to be able to prove it at legal court or from any kind of legal matters so we are we have the precise world clock in the advanced edition of the sample pack and we have also big memory so we are able to lock uh, 300,000 messages if needed and then the individual measurements can be either retrieved through downlink or it can be retrieved from the device in case in case that there would be uh, that there would be a, a really a need. Uh, we are also working for the next year. We are we are working on the uh, local data downlink, uh, but this is not yet implemented. All of the stuff that I've been talking was is already implemented. You have it in your devices, uh, but the local data downlink will be only coming next year. Uh, what I think it's also a big advantage that simple packs and simple industrial devices uh, can support more devices. So you can combine core chain monitoring with Wi-Fi global tracking. You can you can monitor impact, tilt, orientation, uh, light ingression. You can you, you have many options uh, for the use case if you want to report on more things than just temperature. And one of the things that we have also in an advanced edition is we have the machine learning support. So if you want, for instance, to distinguish uh, between transport by bus or by train by airplane, so we are able to record the different movement patterns and then through Sigfox, not to send the actual accelerometer data, but just to send the number of the event, of the, the number of the pattern. So we would be just sending, now it's traveling by bus, now it's traveling by bus, it's uh, traveling by walking. So this is uh, this is definitely per project web, but it's not, it's not going to be a generally available uh, thing that you can buy in an e-shop, but if you need it for your project, we are able to do it. 
uh, it can be also very useful for any kind of preventive preventive maintenance. So if you if you if you can if you know how the wrong how how the wrong vibrations of an engine look like, so we can report that the engine the compressor is not uh, working properly, and we can report it for the preventive maintenance. Uh, certifications, this is a large area and it differs, differs from country to country, it differs from US is different from Japan is different from Europe. So please consult your local certification uh, and regulation requirements. Uh, you have to distinguish uh, between two types of norms. One are the real technical. Which it, which talks about the, the precision, the talk about the uh, the resolution, and uh, then are procedural norms that describe more uh, procedures, and they mostly describe it as a whole chain. So it's not very easy to certify a device by its own as a device, but mostly you certify the whole chain. It means um, installation, uh, device, measuring, maintenance, uh, data processing. So very often we get asked for some procedural uh, certification that really don't make sense because even people working in the core chain monitoring, they don't properly understand certification. So please, uh, again, uh, ask your customer whether he has any specific certification requirements and this needs to be tackled and done one by one. Uh, the same applies for the calibration and certification. Uh, most of the internal sensors come pre-calibrated pre -calibrated from the factory. We are doing batch calibration, batch calibration of all the of all the external thermometers. Uh, then you can also ask for individual calibration that are done by third parties. Uh, it brings with it some costs. So the cost of calibration is between thirty and fifty euros per device. So if you really again depends on the use case if you need if you need a calibrated device it can be done but it would be an additional an additional cost. Uh, then we have a slide about the mounting the devices. Uh, one of the things that people uh, people underestimate is the MacGyver way of duct tape mounting. For instance, we have we are very successful duct tape mounting the simple pack to the pipe where we have a reaction time below one minute. Uh, it's very cheap, very fast. It maybe doesn't look the best, uh, but it's very reliable, especially if you are able to over wrap, for instance, the simple pack around the, the pipe. So it's removable, um, it, it's, it's water and heat resistant. So don't under, underestimate, please, the duct tape. Uh, even it seems to be uh, brutal. Uh, then uh, you have to decide if you want. The double-sided tapes are also very useful and very usable. Uh, please um, don't use the consumer uh, double-sided tapes. Use the industrial ones. Uh, we are just writing a, a white paper which tapes to use. So that will be available shortly. And you have to decide whether it should be a removable tape so something that you can remove or whether uh, it should be a permanent industrial UVB type. Again, the, the, the permanent tape is so strong that it's used in the bus or car construction. So in many cases, it's water and heat resistant. So in many cases, the double-sided tape is a good solution. And for simple industrial devices, we have uh, either holder horizontal or vertical with the screws, or we have also a magnetic, we have also a magnetic holder for the, for the simple industry. And a simple, simple meter can be additionally fixed by internal wall screws. We have, we have uh, like predefined holes that you drill through and you can fix it to the wall for the, for the, for the, uh, to the wall of, of the interior. Uh, battery longevity. 
Uh, it's important to understand that the temperature measurement itself it's uh, pretty negligible from any kind of battery consumption that made. Uh, the main factor uh, uh, is the number of reported messages. Uh, with simple pack 3 we are supporting 30,000 messages. Uh, with simple meter and simple industry, we are supporting 100,000 messages. And I'm talking now about traditional, uh, traditional three-frame messages. If you are using a micro base station in order to densify the coverage at one place, and so you can switch the simple pack and the simple industry, you can switch to one frame, uh, one frame encoding because we have really good coverage and we are not going to lose any frames. So you can use one frame encoding, and for RC1 and RC3, you can use uh, 600 bit. Uh, encoding, uh, basically sending the messages six times faster. Uh, that allows you to not only to report uh, messages uh, 18 times more often uh, daily than the 144 uh, daily limit of the normal sequence transmission, but it also allows you to transmit uh, 1.8 million messages out of the center industry with the current batteries. So uh, if you are using a micro access point, micro base station, local one, you can get from a single device, you can get 1.8 million messages. Uh, so this is also the use case, uh, this is also the use case for which we are not using replaceable batteries. People are asking us why, do you, why you are not supporting replaceable batteries, you are not environmental friendly. But we think that we are environmental friendly because uh, basically when you have the better when, when you have the, the lifespan of the device of 10 years and we can for most use cases we are we survive uh, uh, with 100,000 messages we survive for 10 years when you compare it with other devices that use replaceable batteries so they need 40 batteries for the 10, 10, 10 years time so i think when you compare 40 batteries versus two batteries it's uh, plus all the procedures and changing and and maybe you know batteries going dead so i think that environmentally we are far better with two batteries than with 40 batteries uh, Radio performance, what is important how to understand is that we are, everything is class zero. For the multi-zone, multi uh, we can do manual switch from different zones to another zone. We can do time switch, so you can say, for instance, the device is coming to America within two, two weeks, please switch to RC2 within two weeks, or we can do Monarch radio zone switching or detection. Uh, they're supported in all the simple meters. What is uh, quite interesting is that for, a, for RC1 and RC3, we can enable the power amplifier and we can emit just by API 6 again. We can emit uh, around 22 dB in RC1. Uh, so basically, if you want to certify the whole freezer together with the, together with the, with the sample pack with the device, you would certify the whole device, you would take the attenuation of the freezer and the whole emitting power of the whole freezer would be then 16 dB. So you can get really good uh, radio performance because radio performance from the from the cold environment can be sometimes tricky if it's really well insulated. So it can be tricky, uh, but we can by using brute force we can get through it. Uh, this is a short comparison of. Uh, what well, some of the features uh, between simple pack, uh, uh, simple industry, Senzo Hive, and Sensit uh, devices. Uh, each of them is suitable for, for different use case, uh, but have a look at it if, if, you, uh, if you have any questions. We are open to any questions. And I think uh that's it for the coaching monitoring thanks for your time and you can now pre-order the simple meter and simple simple packs are available simple meter and simple industry devices you can test them right away because they are using the same pcb as a simple pack uh, but the final and we are also making available the 3d prints 
uh, the final molds will be available in January time frame. So we'll be able to ship uh, the simple meat trends in industry in January time frame, basically in, in, two, in two weeks. Uh, so we are open for your questions if you have any questions. or comments or praise or what you did like what you didn't like does that make sense whether we need to provide some information for your business cases Uh, can different modes, uh, whether the different modes can be combined? We can definitely combine. Uh, we can combine the because we do the regular, regular, uh, regular uh, reporting of the temperature. We do it through heartbeats, and heartbeats are independent. So you definitely can combine the regular reporting. So you can say. I want to be I want to be notified if the delta within one within one uh, within uh, when the delta is more than two centigrade so I want to get, to receive an alert otherwise I want to to get uh, hourly hourly uh, temperature measurement each hour to be sure so this can be this can be done uh, currently we I don't think that it makes sense to combine the threshold and the delta because the, tre the thresholds seem to be really narrow most of the time. Uh, but if there would be a specific need for some big use case, uh, it's definitely doable. Uh, we are also, uh, we'll have one more temperature mode in the next revision of the firmware, and that's we call fire mode. Basically, we are setting up the first derivation of, of temperature increase. And if the temperature increases, uh, by more than uh, by, by when the temperature increase slope is really steep, so there's a fire danger. We are able to report the we are able to report the uh, the danger of very rapid uh, very rapid uh, temperature increase. Uh, what about ratios and, and deliver? Uh, so thanks first for all the questions. Uh, what about ratio between sun and delivered messages is 100% idle but not realistic. Uh, we can see, we, we see quite often 100%. It depends completely on the coverage and on, on the use case. So if you, if, uh, uh, if, the, if the coverage is, is, is fine, uh, there's no issue that you couldn't receive 100%. It's more the issue with the lost messages is more in the case when the devices are moving, but when they are in transport. First, they are enclosed in, in, in the fridges, they are enclosed in the trucks. Uh, the other issue is that they go on the, on the, on the roads, and when the speed is around 50, 50 kilometers per hour, you'll get the sick force an effect that's called fading. So it's, it's, uh, the sensitivity is a little bit lower. Uh, or the deliverability of the message is a little bit lower, so therefore for the Czech Republic we are really we are really covering most of the roads and highways very densely in order to 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 counter uh, this fading effect. Uh, so we we see we see it, it, it again it, it it completely depends on the radio performance of the device and of, of the base stations. Uh, the, the success rate of the base station themselves and of the backend, uh, the, the, I think we are close to four or five nights for the reliability of the backend. So it's not everything is just in the transmission. Yeah, uh, if, if you want to send uh, alerts based on both accelerometer and thermometer data, that, that's no problem. We are the temperature and accelerometer alerts are independent, so you can you can use you can use uh, in the latest uh, again the independent uh, independent events are uh, the, the events are independent in the latest firmware revision. So in the revision eighty five, I think it's working independently. So if you want to measure temperature and, for instance, impact or tilt, you can do that. Can I use a device in a super frozen environment? 
our batteries go down to minus 55 degrees. So minus 60 is a little bit too deep for them. So you would, this is, uh, this, I would say it's it's an extreme temperature and I would use uh, some kind of more professional, probably more, 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 more um, expensive uh, device uh, at minus 60 degrees. Uh, one thing that's missing that people are uh, asking quite often uh, when the device is at minus 18 degrees or at minus 20, 25 degrees Celsius, uh, what's the impact on the battery life? Uh, for most of the use, we have done measurement here in the freezer and what we are seeing is a loss uh, around between something between 15 and 20 percent of battery capacity if the measurements and the battery is stored at minus uh, uh, 20 degrees. So come with 20 percent battery, uh, battery decrease, uh, decrease in, this, in, in this very cold environment. Any more questions? If that's all, thanks for uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, we are concluding this series of webinars. We'll be preparing something, uh, some more for the spring. If you have any ideas about what you would like to hear and see from us, uh, please let us know. Otherwise, I uh, uh, wish you a nice holiday and uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.